Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Today we are doing a top five on the applications I use in Linux to do audiobook production. Now, many of these are cross-platform. I think there's only one that may or may not be cross-platform, not completely sure. But before we dive into this, uh, have a look at the link in the description uh, for the links for the audiobooks that I have, if you're interested in any of those. Um, I am a Christian author, so it may or may not be of interest to you. Um, but part of this channel is to teach you how to get real work done on Linux. And I write my books and produce my audiobooks entirely on Linux. Of course, we need, you know, microphones, things like that. I have this sound padding on the wall that I only put up when I started doing my audiobooks. Uh, this is actually my latest one. There is another audiobook which is in the Audacity system. It will be released um, very soon. I'd give it another week or two. Um, but today we're going to walk through the applications that I use to produce these. And uh, the links for the this and my other audiobooks will be in the description down below. Number one, you need something to read your manuscript. All right, so of course, when you're talking about reading your manuscript, uh, what I found works best is write out your entire book. And I actually found that if I do my last edit while I read the audiobook, it's just the best way to get that final edit in. So I generally lay down my audio tracks before the book goes out for publication in any format at all. So of course, I generally will, will use LibreOffice Writer. Um, so this is actually the manuscript of the last book. So I'll go ahead and go in here, and then as I'm reading it, I'll just highlight something in yellow, and uh, that would be any edits that we need to make. Now, if you already have your manuscript done, anything, of course, can be used. Um, you just want to get one document set up so you can read from it. It's better to do it on your computer so you're not flipping pages and things like that. Uh, but definitely make sure that you have some type of reader or writer. Um, in this case, I'm using this. I might just use a basic PDF writer. This is a very uh, self-explanatory thing that you will need. Number two application. Audacity is what I'm going to be using to record my audio. So with Audacity, I'm going to make sure my audio is set up right. And then we're going to boot up the Audacity application. And then we can go ahead and um, do the recording. And then we can do all the processing. We can do a variety of different steps. Now, a couple tips for Audacity and audiobook production. Uh, the first is make sure that your version of Audacity is at least 2.2.1. The reason is when you are producing audiobooks, you need to make sure that you have very specific requirements and you want to be able to run this plugin that's called ACX Check. All right. So if I run my ACX Check, which uh, I would need to auto select my uh, audio. This will probably fail because I have not processed this for passing a check. I don't think I have anyway. I might have. Um, but what you need to have is uh, the ACX check will tell you exactly what you need. So you need um, a, a peak level of negative 3. You need an RMS of negative 22 and a noise floor. I think it's negative 60. I think it's 23 is the average RMS. So what you need to do is run through a series of plugins and the plugin stack that you need to run an audiobook will only work on 2.2.1 or later. Okay, so you do want to use Audacity. Make sure you have a newer version. Here on Linux Mint 18.3, I'm just using the Ubuntu 16 PPA to always have the latest stable version. Uh, you could do a flat pack, a snap, whatever else that is available. I don't remember what all Audacity is available in. Of course, if you're on Arch, Fedora, anything like that, you are going to have the latest version regardless. And if you're on the later, um, the later Ubuntu branch, the 18 branch, you will probably have the newer version. I'm not 100% sure. But make sure you have Audacity, get a little bit of training on how to use it. Then you're going to process them, get everything all set and ready to go for your audiobook production. Number three, you need to build an audiobook cover no matter where you are putting your audiobook app. And so for this, I personally use GIMP. You could also use Creta or anything else that's out there that you can use to do more advanced image manipulation. You don't want to be trying to do something like this in paint. You're going to have a bad day. 
but you do need to make sure you have a good square. This is the thing that messes some people up because when you're doing a book, you do not use a square. When you do an audiobook, you have to use a square. Although for some reason, one major company, I think is it actually Barnes & Noble has not yet figured this out and they do weird things with the covers. <laughs> but anyway, that being said, um, you want to make sure that your image dimensions are about 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels at 150 resolution. And the reason you want this is for the different size requirements. Some of them require a little bit more, some require a little bit less. 3000 is that perfect sweet spot. You want to be able to do a nice, good, concise square. You don't want it to basically what's called letterbox your book cover. Basically take your book cover and just add stuff on either side. You don't generally want to do that. Make sure that you have something that you can do that is a variation of your cover. So when you are planning your book, if you know for sure you are going to be using an audiobook, make sure that your planning phase will allow you to do a square and the rectangle that you need for the book. But make sure you're using something like GIMP Krita. I personally use GIMP, so that's why that is in my list. Number four. Kid 3. Now there are other audio taggers as well of all the different audio taggers that I've worked with. Kid 3 is absolutely my favorite. Uh, this will allow you to do any types of tags and I like it because it's easy to understand. You can set up your hotkeys and things like that. Uh, you can edit your various types of tags. So in this case you want to make sure that you are doing a tag version 1 and a tag version 2. Um, you want to do the multiple different versions because different devices read different versions. You want to have your audience has to have the best user experience. So if you're talking about an older device or a non-internet connected or just a, a lower end device, like the little SanDisk um, MP3 players that I, that I keep around because I just love those little things. They're small, they last a long time, but they don't read version tag version 2. So you have to make sure everything is tagged also with tag version 1. This will actually allow you to make sure your one tag is set and then just push a button to copy it. I've actually hotkeyed it. Uh, this is not my user account where I do this, so it wouldn't work. But I actually have hotkeyed control one. will just basically push the from tag two button. So I make my tag two right and then I automatically copy it into tag one. And then I also have it set up so I've deleted everything that I don't need and I default everything that I need to default. And that way I just have to edit a fewer items. Make sure that you are dropping in an, an image file for your book. This is very important to make sure that if you're uh, viewing it on something like a, a phone or you know some other higher end audiobook device, you will have a nice picture to go with it. Now you don't use your 3000 by 3000 pixel. I drop mine down to 300 by 300 pixel for this image here. You don't want the file to be that large and the 3000 by 3000 pixel image is huge. So just make sure that everything is nicely tagged and titled. Uh, make sure you have your version 2, your version 1, and then uh, just make sure that everything is all set up the way you need it. Of course, I like to highlight all of them at once just to verify that everything is correct, except, of course, the title and the track number will be different. Everything else should be the same. And so get all your tagging set up and then click in from tag 2. Number five, Lame. Lame is a wonderful terminal application that I use for doing my audiobook production. This is one of these cases where uh, a terminal-based application is just going to be infinitely more powerful than a GUI-based application. And yes, there's times that the terminal applications are better. And for the um, Linux elitists, there are times that you want a GUI application to get things done. Now, the reason we're going to use Lame is when you are producing your audiobooks for a distribution through the global audiobook networks, you need to make sure that you have 192 kbps. But if you are selling that audiobook on your own platform, or in my case, I put them up through PayHip, I sell them on my own store, and I put them up for my um, supporters uh, on thinklifemedia.com, so I don't want to be distributing 192 kilobit per second copies of those. That is massive, massive overkill. So I distribute those at 32 kbps so it doesn't have the massive file size. So it works out very well. So here's the man page for it. You can see here it's just lame, uh, options, input, output file. 
Basically, this is an MP3 encoder. It's going to be able to allow me to quickly change my bit rates around so I can go in from start with my 192, cut down to 32 without taking a long time. So with this, um, there's you can see the variety of various options there, but the reason you use a terminal-based application instead of a GUI one is automation. So you use a script so that your conversion can go much quicker. So I've actually written this script which takes my 192 uh, KBPS MP3 files and it will convert them into a 32. So basically what we're doing here is we are creating a for loop and a bash command and with a for loop we're just grabbing everything dot, uh, star mp3 and then for each of those we're doing lame with the mp3 input which is our f our bit rate at 32 whatever file name we're starting with we're dropping it in the folder called 32. Now to make this work, what I've actually found is if you just try and copy the script and just try and run it, it generally um, does not work well. So let's just go ahead and run it. You'll see it'll give you this can't initialize. Uh, the reason that I found is that it doesn't have that directory there. So make sure that you have that directory there first. So we're gonna create a directory called 32. You can see over here it created the 32 directory. Even now though, it's still, okay, usually it doesn't like to run until I run a list command. Um, but running that, now it's basically running a list command. It's now taking all of my input files at 192 and it's outputting my files at 32. Just let this run. It should take just about a minute here and we can actually see if we go in here that it's just going to be creating my files for me. Now there is an extra step once you do this and that's that this thing will bring along IDE tag version two, but it will not bring along IDT tag version one with it. So the next step is we need to go back into kid three and then just go down into our directory here. You'll see that all of these guys still work, but it has stripped my tag one. So we're just gonna come over here, expand tag one, hit copy, and now each one of these guys is right. Now the red means that something was cut out, in this case written and narrated by my name, cuts out, that's okay. Just go ahead and hit save. Now I have all my files at 32 kbps, so I have a copy of this for my global audiobook distribution, and I have a copy for my personal local distribution as well. So. Hopefully that video was helpful for you. Thanks for coming along. Leave me your thoughts, comments, other tips in the comments down below. You can help support the channel by having a look at the links above me or in the description down below. I will have all of my audiobooks linked in the description. And thanks for coming along and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.